Hey guys, welcome to Skill Link. Most of you would have seen these types of springs on vehicles. These springs are an important part of the suspension system. In one of our previous videos, we spoke about the suspension system. Have a look at it, the link is in the description below. These springs are classified into different types as steel springs, rubber springs, air springs and plastic springs. In today's video, we'll be discussing the steel springs. Steel springs are classified into leaf spring, helper spring, coil spring and torsion bar. Let's start by talking about the leaf spring suspension. This image represents the construction of the leaf spring. The spring has many leaves of increasing length which are made out of steel plates. At one end of the spring, a shackle pin is used to connect the spring eye to the frame, whereas the other end is mounted onto the frame with the help of a simple pin. In addition, the center portion of the spring is attached to the axle with the help of a U-bolt. So, the leaf spring's stiffness or the spring rate are governed by various factors. The first of them is the length of the spring. As the length of the spring reduces, the stiffness of the spring will increase. And as the length increases, the stiffness reduces. The same applies for the other factors as well. For example, the width and the thickness of the spring. As the width and thickness increases, the stiffness increases and vice versa. The last factor is the number of leaves. Similar to the other factors, as the number of leaves increases, higher will be the stiffness of the suspension. So, to obtain a smooth ride, a low stiffness rate is required which will have higher deflection under a given load. So, what happens when the load acts on these springs? Well, as the load acts, the leaves slide over each other and friction between the interface occurs. This leads to a hard ride which creates unnecessary noise and wear of the spring components. Hence, it is necessary to reduce friction as much as possible. In older models, low viscosity penetrating oil was sprayed to avoid friction. But the new models have certain features that eliminate the need for periodic maintenance. In the newer models, the number of leaves have been reduced and the leaf plates are made out of low friction materials. They also use synthetic buttons at the end of the leaves which reduce friction. These leaf springs are further classified into different types based upon their design. Let's represent them with the help of images. These are all pretty self-explanatory. The first is a semi-elliptical spring followed by quarter elliptical spring, the three-quarter elliptical spring, the full elliptical spring, a transverse spring and a platform type spring. Now let's get into the next type of steel spring, the helper springs. These are similar to that of the leaf springs except that it is mounted above the main spring. It is arranged in such a way that only when the load acting is high, the helper springs start to actuate. Otherwise, only the main spring is operated. These helper springs are used in many commercial vehicles and are provided on the rear suspension. As the load increases, the end of the helper spring touches the main suspension and enables its function. The helper springs are highly durable and are used for heavy-duty applications. Since the interleaf friction is high, it doesn't absorb minute vibrations from the road surface. So, this type is suitable for large commercial vehicles that carry heavy loads. Now, the third type of steel spring is the coil spring. According to the requirement, steel wires are coiled throughout. These are used in both front and rear independent suspension. This coil spring withstands both shear and bending stress but not torque reaction and side thrust. So, arrangements are made in such a way that both the torque reaction and side thrust are considered while positioning the axles relative to the frame. The energy stored per unit volume in these coil springs is twice as that of leaf springs. To apply stiffness in a progressive manner, helper springs are used here as well against the increasing load. Coil springs are also classified into two types. They are tension spring and compression spring. We need not go into their details, instead, let's see their characteristics. As previously mentioned, the energy absorption rate per unit weight is greater when compared to the leaf spring. Unlike leaf springs, no control of oscillation is necessary. Instead, shock absorbers are needed. Finally, there is no resistance to lateral force. So, linkage mechanisms to support the axle such as suspension arm, lateral control rod, etc. are required. The last type of steel spring is the torsion bar. These are often seen on combat vehicles and tanks like T-72 Leopard, etc. 
Also, its usage can be seen in modern trucks and SUVs from Ford, Mazda, etc. This torsion bar is a steel bar operated by twisting it. Its construction is very simple. One end is connected to the frame and the other end to the end of the wheel arm. When the car runs over a bump, the wheel will move up and down, thereby producing a torque on the torsion bar which twists the bar around its axis. Nowadays, torsion tubes which are hollow and light in weight is replacing torsion bars in many cases. The main advantage is, when compared to leaf springs, the torsion bars weigh less and have a compact design which occupies less space. The disadvantages are that the driving and braking torque do not act on the torsion bar, so additional linkages are needed. 